In this example, we are given that f of x equals x squared minus x minus 6 and g of x equals x minus 3. We need to find f divided by g of x and its domain. So the first thing we need to do is find the quotient function f divided by g of x. Well, what does f divided by g of x mean? All it means is you take f of x and you divide it by g of x. And what was f of x? It was given as x squared minus x minus 6. So I have x squared minus x minus 6, all divided by g of x, which is x minus 3. Now, can we simplify this expression? Before you're tempted to reduce anything between the numerator and the denominator, you need to make sure both the numerator and denominator are totally factored. Looking at the numerator, will this factor? It looks very possible. It is a trinomial, so let's see if it will factor. It's one of the easy cases. The leading coefficient of the x squared is a 1, so I'm going to do this by guess and check. So here are my two parentheses. Multiply to an x squared, I have to have an x and an x. My constants multiply to a negative and add to a negative. So I need two numbers of opposite signs and they need to differ by one. So what two numbers multiply to negative six and add to negative one? Well, one and six won't work, but two and three will. But remember, it needs to add to a negative one. So I need the bigger number three to be the negative and the two to be the positive. Double check by falling. x squared plus 2x minus 3x gives me negative 1x. And negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. So that factored. And then the denominator is already totally factored. Now, does anything reduce? If you notice, x minus 3 is a common factor of the whole numerator, so I can reduce that with the x minus 3 in the denominator. And I'm going to get 1 times x plus 2 divided by 1, so that's just going to give me x plus 2. So the simplified version of my quotient function f divided by g of x is equal to x plus 2. Next, we need to find the domain of the quotient function. There are two different methods for finding the domain of f divided by g. The first method says the domain is the intersection of the domains of f and g but you also must exclude all values of x for which g of x equals 0. The second method said just use the unsimplified version of f divided by g of x to find the domain. I think method 2 is a little easier, so that's what I'm going to use. But what do we mean by the unsimplified version of the quotient function? This is the unsimplified version of the quotient function. So looking at this expression, is the domain of this function going to be all real numbers or are there any domain issues? There are no even index radicals. There are no logarithms but there are x's in the denominator. So I'm definitely going to have to exclude all values of x that make my denominator x minus 3 equal to 0. Solving this simple linear equation, add 3 to both sides, I get x equals 3. So I'm going to have to exclude 3 from the domain of all real numbers. Writing the domain in words, I get the domain of f divided by g of x is all real numbers except x equals 3. But often we're asked to express this domain in interval notation. So remember, if I graph my domain on the number line, 
I want everything except x equals 3. So I need the interval on the left of 3, the interval on the right of 3, but I'm not going to include 3. So my interval notation will start down here at negative infinity. It will go up to 3, but it will not include it, so I must put a parenthesis on the 3. Unioned with my second interval that again starts with a parenthesis on the 3 and goes all the way up to positive infinity. And that is the way we write the domain in interval notation. One last thing I want to point out is notice it said use the unsimplified version of f divided by g of x. If I'd have used the simplified version here, looking at this expression of x plus 2, it would look like the domain was just all real numbers. But because I reduced these x minus 3s, we wouldn't have seen the problem caused by x equals 3.